This is a Celestron Omni AZ102 millimeter refractor telescope. I have it mounted on my Ioptron cube. Um, now this telescope has a Vixen style GC or, or CG5 dovetail mounted on its right side. Unfortunately, the mount has this thing expecting it on the left. And so what that means is that the telescope is upside down. This actually isn't as big of a problem as you might think because the star diagonal can rotate and I don't mind using the focusing knobs up on the top instead of the bottom. The only real problem is that the finder scope is way down here so I really have to get down if I'm looking through the finder scope, especially as I get closer to the zenith. Now the real solution is to buy a set of 4 inch rings and an 8 inch dovetail and put this scope on rings as opposed to the dovetail that's mounted just directly to the tube. However, that's going to cost at least 60 to 70 bucks. So in a temporary workaround, what I'm planning on doing is rotating the focuser assembly 180 degrees. It's just held onto the tube with these three screws here. Now if there were four screws, I could take the screws out, rotate 180 and screw them back in. With three screws, I can go 120 or 240, but I can't get it exactly right. So what I'm going to do is have to drill some new holes. I thought about drilling three new holes in the tube, which would be pretty easy. And then somebody online suggested, well, why don't you just drill and tap three new holes in the focuser assembly? And that way, the extra holes would be hidden behind the tube, so I'm only using the three standard holes that came with it. Um, and if I want to reverse this later on, if I get rings or something, um, reversing it's super easy. So I'm going to take off as many accessories as possible from the focuser unit, and that includes this tube here, just to make it easier to work on that guy. So in here we have some basically tape shims and then that black piece of plastic goes in here and this guy can adjust the tension on it to make sure that focusing tube is nice and tight but still easy to move. I'm just putting a piece of tape here to mark the original position of this guy after I take these screws out. I'm going to be rotating it 180, putting it back. I just want to make sure I don't get confused about where it was initially these little machine screws. If you don't want to use a piece of tape you can just remember that the finder scope hole is very close to this label. So that guy just pulls out there. Um, you can see here are these three holes here that are presumably tapped for those screws. So all I need to do is drill three more holes with this thing rotated 180 degrees um, and then I can screw this arm 180 degrees flipped around. So I took this screw into my workshop and I found that a metric four nut fits on there very nicely. So I'm pretty darn sure these are M4 machine screws. Um, and so I just need an M4 tap to tap three new holes to thread those. So if you want to do this procedure, you're going to need a Phillips screwdriver, number two pencil, a center tap to mark the holes, a 5 64th drill for a pilot hole, a 1 8 drill to um, be able to tap, and then a tap suitable for the screws you're using. The screws on my telescope were metric 4 M4 by 0 0.7 threading. You could of course use any tap you happen to have screws that match um, and then your screws for your three holes would be different from the three holes, the original holes. Um, I liked having the same screws for all the holes and you know a tap holder. You're going to need some cutting fluid and a drill um, a hammer to hit your center punch with, um, some paper towels to clean up with, and probably the hardest bit is something to hold the actual thing you're working on, either another person or a vise. Now if you didn't have an M4 tap, you could theoretically just drill three holes that are big enough for an M4 screw, um, take some M4 nuts, screw them in, and use some JB weld to JB weld the nuts to the inside here. Um, but luckily I have an M4 tap. 
Now the holes in the aluminum tube here have a little bit of wiggle room, so I don't even have to get, you know, super high tolerances for where I tap these guys. As long as I'm somewhere near the center, that head will cover up the entire hole there. So to get this as close as possible to 180 degrees, I have one hole here, and I basically need that hole to be right over here. Um, and I've measured there's exactly four inches around between these two holes, which is a nice, you know, <laughs> measurement there. And this isn't actually the center, the center is a little bit over here, so I'm going to measure exactly two inches in from both of these holes, put a mark here, and then I'm going to set that down right where this hole is, and then I'm going to use these three holes to put a mark on this guy to show me where to center punch and drill and tap. Now if you're not trying to be quite as precise as I am, you could just say, take the center of this bottom thing and that's the center and that's where you want that hole. I have to give Celestron some credit. I was thinking it might be easier to drill through the tube than this cast aluminum and focusing assembly. Um, but this tube is pretty darn thick, so the people who are saying, hey, you need rings, this little you know, bracket on the side won't keep it steady enough, that tube is, is very rigid. I am quite impressed with the thickness of that tube. Um, so anyways, I put this guy right through here. I'm going to put a mark in each of these holes so that I'll know exactly where to tap and drill, or drill and tap, the three new holes. So the inside here isn't painted white. We're going to try it with a pencil first. If I can't see the pencil markings, we're going to move up to the um, silver sharpie. I just have to be very careful not to get silver sharpie on the outside of this tube when I'm doing that. So where the spray paint has overflowed, I can see that easily. I know there should be, oh, there I can see it in the light just barely. Although, I don't know, why in the world is it off to the side there? Let me see. Oh, I guess, oh, the finder scope is off to the side, so that makes sense. So there's one, there's the other, and there's a third. So it looks like I can do a pencil. All right, now while I'm working, I'm going to flip this thing upside down, put the dust cover on just to keep dust out of here. Hardest part of working with a cylindrical object like this is fixturing it. Um, I have my vise turned around with the kind of the 45 degree pipe clamp thing on it. You have to be careful not to squeeze it too hard to deform this guy, but you should be able to get in there enough to center punch it. Now I have a drill press, but this vise fixturing is so nice, I'm actually going to drill my pilot holes with a hand drill. Now while I have metric taps, I don't have metric drills, so I'm just using a 5 64ths for the pilot hole. The um, drill size for an M4 tap is supposed to be 3.3 millimeters. Um, this is about half of that, so I'll have to move up to a larger drill before I tap it. All right, that's more than enough cutting fluid. Don't forget your safety glasses. verifying my accuracy, there's two casting marks that are 180 degrees apart from each other. Um, this original factory hole is just off-center to the left a bit, and my hole is just off-center to the right a bit, so I feel that those are pretty much 180 degrees rotated from each other. And then if I look at my other original factory holes to my pilots, they're straight across there. And I don't think it needs to be super, super accurate here, um, but I feel pretty good about it. So as an added sanity check, I put this guy back in with my pilot holes in here, um, and I can see the pilot hole inside of each of these holes, and it's actually just twisted just slightly. So if I center that hole there, this hole here is not centered, but it's within the circle there pretty well. And this hole is also not centered, but it's within the circle pretty well. Um, both of these are offset just slightly that way, so if I twist it 
just slightly so that these guys are centered, then this guy's off just a little bit there. So not bad given that I was doing this with hand tools. All right, so a 3.3 metric is a little bigger than a 1 8 and a little smaller than a 9 64. The 9 64 is still smaller than 4 millimeters, but not by a lot. So I'm going to go with the 1 8 and then if the tapping is difficult, I might take that 1 8 and kind of wiggle it around, make the hole a little bigger. Um, but I think since it's aluminum and I have, you know, hardened steel taps, I think I'll be able to tap a 1 8 with an M4. I was talking about taking this over to my drill press. But I've decided I think I can do a better job with this guy fixtured with my hand drill than if I'm holding this guy using the drill press. So I'm just going to keep on with the hand drill here. Now, if you have a big enough metric tap set, you'll actually have two M4 taps. And the thread pitch is very similar. One is M4 by 0.75, and that's not the one you want. You want the M4 by 0.7. Um, and I verified this by taking a nut that worked on the original screw, and I can screw you know that into my tap so I know that's the right threading. Um, also, you can go into the original hole here. Um, and these original holes are actually a little tighter than the nut. So my nut's a little loosey-goosey, but these holes have that same threading in there. So worst case scenario, if you tap the holes with something entirely different from M4, um, you can just use three different screws for your three new holes. And as long as you keep the original screws, you can use the original M4 screws for the original holes if you ever want to put it back. Now I thought about using a drill to tap this, but since these holes are undersized, I'm going to go by hand. If it gets too tight, I'll just enlarge the holes. All right, tapping into that aluminum was super easy. Just a last sanity check before I tap the other two holes. Make sure the original screws do fit nicely into the M4 by 0.7 threading. Okay, now we have six mounting holes. We can mount this vertically or upside down. Um, do keep in mind you've put a lot of tap oil on this guy, so we're going to hit this with some soapy water and get all that oil off before we put it back onto the telescope. All right, I used some hot water and Dawn detergent to get the oil off of these holes. Um, you have to be careful to avoid these plastic shim pieces here. Um, and then I use isopropyl alcohol to kind of dry off some of that water. Then I'm going to let it sit here for a while to get all the vapor water evaporated off of it. All right, now the moment of truth where we figure out if all these holes really do line up. So I used to have this guy like there. I want to rotate it 180 degrees. So this mark is now in with that line or the, uh, the markings up here. Okay, I put all three screws in, but I did not tighten them. I just got them far enough in the threads to make sure they're in. Um, you can see I can wiggle this back and forth just slightly because there's enough play in those holes where, you know, this thing wiggles just a little bit. So now they're all in, they're set up well, I can tighten them all down, and essentially I just have to reverse the disassembly procedure and I'm all done. Okay, this focuser assembly has some kind of tape on plastic shims there and here. And mine's a little weird. It has an extra piece here, so apparently it wasn't, um, you know, it was too big, and so they had to throw an extra piece on at the factory. And then in this third position, there's a piece of plastic, and it has some holes in it, and it fits in one particular way where those holes line up with the grub screws. Now, the screws don't actually hold it in place. They just keep it from moving back and forth. And then there's a large screw that can be used to push that against the focusing tube that goes in and out. Um, so you want to have that all the way out. And now you just have to get this guy in here. And it would be pretty easy, except for me, 
I have that little extra piece of tape. And so I need to get this thing over that extra piece of tape. Um, so if you didn't have that, you could probably do this with this piece on the telescope, but I need to put my finger in there and wiggle that thing around. Um, and so that's why I'm putting this in place here before I put this guy back on the telescope permanently. Now that I have that in there, I can screw this on and then put the pinion gear to, to move that rack around and so forth. Now this will wiggle a little bit so I can tighten this guy until it slides nice and smooth. Um, it's still easy, but without wiggling. So the finder scopes are on top, the focuser knobs are on the bottom. Only way you know this thing's upside down is the markings on the tube. Now I did have to make sure that I set the part position exactly between these two legs because with the finder scope here and the knobs here, um, when I go fully vertical on this, it does have to be exactly in this orientation so it misses these two legs as it goes in and parks. Um, so, you know, if you had it on rings that was a little farther out, you might not have to worry about that. You might be able to spin it around even if this leg was going that way. Um, but it still fits for me. So you can see here just how close my clearances are in the park position.